Assalamu alaikum and namaskar. Good morning and greetings to respected and honorable chief guest of today's program, Dr. Muhammad Abdul Razak, Minister of Agriculture, Government of Bangladesh. Respected Professor Lutful Hassan, Vice Chancellor of Bangladesh Agricultural University. Dr. Nazurul Islam, Director General of Bangladesh Agricultural Research Institute. Professor Prasanta Kalita, Chair of this program and Director of Appropriate Scale Mechanization Consortium from University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Professor Manjurur Al-Alam, Project Director and Mechanization Innovation Hub in Bangladesh from Bangladesh Agricultural University. Distinguished guest, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity today to speak a little bit about the Feed the Future Sustainable Intensification Innovation Lab. More especially, about our research, education, and outreach programs and activities in Bangladesh. First, I wanted to thank the government of Bangladesh, various agricultural universities in Bangladesh, and Bangladesh Agricultural Research Council and its multiple research centers, and the Department of Agricultural Extension for giving us the opportunity to work in Bangladesh. Thanks are also due to the United States Agency for International Development, USAID, and particularly the Bangladesh mission for allowing us to work in Bangladesh through strong partnerships with the host country, national and international organizations. The Sustainable Intensification Innovation Lab is funded by the Feed the Future program, which is led by USAID. Feed the Future program is the United States government's global hunger and food security initiative, which works closely with the host country governments to address food insecurity and malnutrition in the most vulnerable populations. This year, 2020, started with an unprecedented challenge for the globe with the incidence of rapid spread of coronavirus. This human health global pandemic infected 31 million people and has caused 970,000 deaths around the world. Bangladesh currently has about 350,000 infections and about 5,000 deaths. The impact of this global pandemic will be felt in both the short and the long term on human health, movement and migration of people, loss of jobs, and employment opportunities at both on-farm and off-farm activities. This pandemic is going to have impact on agricultural and food industry and associated markets. One of the short-term impacts of COVID-19 was the shortage of labor for agricultural operations, transportations of harvested produce, and movement of agricultural inputs and supply chains. Some governments declared the agricultural sector as essential, which helped to minimize the potential negative impacts of COVID-19. However, changes in the demand, supply, and prices will impact the farmer's income at local and regional levels particularly those regions and farms that are dependent on agricultural export markets and processing industry will have larger impacts. This pandemic came at the time when the world was already suffering from several challenges, including food insecurity, malnutrition, climate crisis, and energy crisis. It is sad and unacceptable that currently about 850 million people around the world go to bed hungry every night. And about 2 billion people around the world are, mar are malnourished, many of them being women and children. Some are undernourished with those not receiving enough calories, some with micronutrient deficiencies, particularly iron, vitamin A, and zinc. And others are suffering from obesity and associated illnesses. As Dr. Norman Borlaug, the Nobel Peace Prize winner and father of the Green Revolution said, food is a moral right to all who are born into this world. Let us take that statement to heart and collectively work towards free and make this world free from poverty, hunger, and malnutrition. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, provide a common platform for governments and states to come together to address global food and nutrition security. The first two SDGs of reducing poverty and zero hunger are directly relevant to agriculture. And agriculture can have positive impacts 
on several other SDGs. The grand challenge of our generation of scholars is to provide abundant, safe, and nutritious food to all people at all times. This is not a new challenge for us. In the past, we have doubled our food production in vulnerable areas in the Indian subcontinent. Bangladesh has tripled its food production when you compare today from what it was in 1972. We did it by bringing more land into agriculture, increasing yields by enhancing the use of inputs, irrigation, fertilizers, and pesticides, and producing more crops per year, that is increasing cropping intensity. However, this time, we will have to increase yields from existing farmland while protecting our environment because we don't have more land to bring into agriculture. This concept is known as sustainable intensification. This concept takes a holistic, multidisciplinary, and systems approach towards agri-food systems. It emphasizes both biophysical and social innovations. Agricultural scientists are the drivers of innovation in food provisioning and ecosystem services. We have the opportunity to take the lead and make a difference. The Sustainable Intensification Innovation Lab is one of the 21 different innovation labs which are currently operational in the United States. Kansas State University serves as the management entity for the Sustainable Intensification Innovation Lab, and I have the privilege of serving as its director. Our innovation lab began in September 2014 and will continue until September 2024. From 2014 to 2019, we were operational in six countries around the world, Senegal and Burkina Faso in West Africa, Ethiopia and Tanzania in East Africa, Cambodia and Bangladesh in Asia. I'm pleased to say that we will be continuing our programs for the next four years in Bangladesh, Cambodia, and Senegal. We may have few other opportunities to work in other countries as well. We have a large portfolio of research, education, and outreach. We bring an extended network of U.S. universities and link them with the host country organizations and partners. We currently support more than 60 national and international organizations, bringing together more than 130 scientists and support more than 120 students around the world. We support multiple research projects and have continued to fund four consortium. One is the appropriate scale mechanization consortium, which is organizing this event. We have already learned about it from our team members. The others include Geospatial and Farming Systems Research Consortium, Soils Consortium, and Policy Research Consortium. We have several ongoing programs in Bangladesh with multiple partners. Most of these programs are operational in Delta, coastal, and colder regions in the South. These are the Feed the Future zones and home to most vulnerable populations in Bangladesh. First, we have the Mechanization Innovation Hub, which is focused on developing, adapting, promoting appropriate scale mechanization tools that help smallholder farmers with particular emphasis on women farmers so that they can be more efficient in planting, harvesting, and threshing. You've heard some of the details from Dr. Manjura Lala. These improved machinery designs also support conservation agricultural practices, which is key to improving soil health and minimizing soil degradation. Most of the research and outreach activities are being conducted in on-farm condition. That will help build the capacity and empower smallholder farmers. There is a significant attention to education of graduate students, both master's and doctoral degrees, and curriculum development on aspects related to agricultural mechanization and agricultural engineering. I especially wanted to thank the leadership of Bangladesh Agricultural University who work closely with other private and public sector organizations to establish this hub for mechanization in Bangladesh. I'm very pleased with the accomplishments of this innovation hub in a, such a short period of time and their influence on the policy. We've already heard about their activities and accomplishments earlier today. Second, we have a research program which is focused on coldest communities that is home to many vulnerable and resilient people. This is in partnership with Kansas State University and International Rice Research Institute. The activities of this projects are focused on high yielding stress tolerant and high zinc 
rice varieties. An introduction of high value dry season crops with improved management practices. The goal is to diversify and increase farm income and improve household nutrition. Third is our Geospatial and Farming Systems Consortium, which uses advanced geospatial, remote sensing, and digital tools to map existing resources and identify opportunities for sustainable intensification, and to determine suitability and scalability of selected innovations in different Feed the Future geographical zones in Bangladesh. All of these projects work directly and closely with host country national agricultural research and extension systems and their networks. Local agricultural universities, local private sectors, and several international organizations, including International Rice Research Institute, International Maize and Wheat Improvement Center, are part of our networks. Despite the challenges of an increasing population, climate change, soil degradation, intrusion of saline water, frequent flooding, there has been significant progress made to address food and nutritional security in Bangladesh. This is due to strong government programs and their commitment. Bangladesh has great potential to lead in several areas in agricultural science and technology, particularly in the areas of natural resource management, adaptation to climate change, diversification, and mechanization. I am pleased to witness the support of central and state government to climate smart and nutrition smart agriculture, agribusiness management, entrepreneurship, and private sector engagement. There are several government programs targeted directly towards welfare of the farmers. This is commendable and noteworthy. Add this, as this speaks directly to the leadership and commitment of the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and the government of Bangladesh. Strong and sustained support from the government and private sector is key to success of agricultural program. We truly appreciate your support and commitment. This is an exciting and challenging phase for agricultural scholars. While we celebrate the past successes, we need to be prepared for future and current challenges. We have the grand challenge of providing access to safe and nutritious food in sufficient quantities to meet the demands of our growing population. We must do this by developing innovations that are environmentally sustainable, economically viable, socially acceptable, and leaves no one behind. Bangladesh is a young country, and we need to engage youth in agriculture. Agricultural mechanization, bioprocessing and engineering Geospatial and digital tools provide this unique opportunity for youth to see agriculture as technology, agriculture as business and entrepreneurship. We need to transform the image from being seen as hard work, backbreaking and risky to something that focuses on its true value and cause. We need to promote agriculture as food, agriculture as nutrition, agriculture as health, agriculture as business, agriculture as technology, and agriculture as fun. And mechanization gives us this opportunity. Let us together pledge that we will all work <clears throat> for the welfare of our farmers to provide us food, take care of our planet for the present and future generation, conserve our natural resources, and let's all be global citizens. Once again, I thank the Ministry of Agriculture, Government of Bangladesh, leaders of local universities, Bangladesh Agricultural Research Council and its research institutes, Department of Agricultural Extension, private sector, and all, all our local, national, and international partners, and the USAID Bangladesh Mission for giving us a chance to work in your beautiful and resilient country. I appreciate the opportunity to thank all of our collaborators and partners who are working hard to anger, to end hunger around the world. Stay safe and take care. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Professor Prashad, for your nice deliberation and supporting us in research and development. So today's uh, chief patron of the inaugural session is Professor uh, Dr. Lutful Hassan. Uh, Dr. Lutful Hassan is the vice chancellor of the Bangladesh Agriculture University and a professor at the Department of Genetics and Plant Building, uh, Faculty of Agriculture, Bangladesh.